Hey everybody, welcome back to another fun fun episode of Slime Zone with your host Boomer and today we are talking GPS mining. Now I know previously I've done an episode on this and it was in the SkyGrid series but we're going to kind of overhaul this a little bit. I wasn't prepared to jump into GPS mining as much as I was. I actually wanted to talk about the global warming plugin. And in going through global warming, realize that we actually have to do some GPS mining in order to get us to where we want to go. Uh, what we're looking for, I believe, is called Cinebrite, which we're going to use to turn into Mercury. So right now I'm just working on getting enough XP to unlock the last item that I need within the guide. I've got to get the 30 levels here to get the scanner unlocked. So that's what we're looking for right now. Once we've got the scanner, then we're going to talk about uh, the network that you need to put together, that it needs power. Uh, different power options would still be the same as it would be with any other item in Slime Fun. That doesn't change. But we do need a certain amount of power to power the machines up. And we're also going to have to have enough energized, or not energizers, uh, enough transmitters to reach a certain level to be able to geomine and we'll talk about that here in a little bit but in any GPS network you really have a few different things you have transmitters you have a control panel you have a scanner a miner and then you also have uh, the option for an oil pump and I believe I've mentioned uh, a few times that when you are geomining or GPS mining, you're going to get the most oil out of ocean biomes. So right now, I think this is either a mountain biome. Uh, just let me take a quick look and see where we're sitting. I'm in a snowy tundra, so we're not going to get much oil out of this uh, chunk as it is. We're going to do the majority of our mining over the ocean, but you can also get plastic sheets which are the most expensive thing probably about mining from rubber now it is a little expensive but it's a lot cheaper than putting together everything to go mining so here's what we've got unlocked we've got the first three transmitters um, we should really unlock the GPS as well just to kind of show you about that that's going to be a pretty expensive beast to put together but even a carbonado, actually a carbonado isn't too bad because you need four advanced, one carbonado, one carbon, four bronze, four GPS. And then, you know, it, it's not that bad getting it together. It's once we get up to the energized one. Let me go ahead and show you what's in a recipe. Two blistering ingots, two nickel, no big deal. Another carbonado, which uh, from last episode, we've got now our carbon in our compressed carbon machines already set up. They're also creating steel, steel ingots, Damascus ingots, hardened steel, and we've included the recipe for reinforced. Now, I think I've gotten three reinforced ingots out of this only because one, we need more spawners, two isn't a whole lot. We're gonna add six more spawners to that farm to get more coal going. Um, and then we've gotta get back on setting up the manual kill chamber so we can get the heads. So we definitely need transmitters for this. You will need a control panel to uh, set up your network. Again, you need a power source. You will need to scan it first and then you can mine it. And then if you're gonna pull the oil out of the chunk, you would also need an oil pump. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and craft all these up. And then we'll walk through in much greater detail, I think, than I did the first time on how to properly use these for setting up your network. All right, guys, so we are up. We actually did put in the floor and we've moved our nuclear up to the upper level of this building. And we actually did build a second nuclear power plant. So hopefully now our power uh, challenges are resolved. They've been running really nice for me. So let's talk about setting up the geo network. So again, we're going to need a control panel, a scanner, a miner, oil pump, and transmitters. So let's start by putting down the control panel and opening it up. There's three things up here. We're only going to worry about the first two. 
any transmitters, when you click on this, will show all the transmitters and relevant information related to each one. The network info, info will tell you if you have an online network and its complexity or signal strength level. Don't let the term complexity mess you up. It's simply just a, a number that you need to reach in order for the GPS system to work. Waypoints we'll talk about later on down the line. So we're going to start by placing down our scanner and our miner. Now I've actually already scanned this chunk so it's already gone back. But right now in order to rescan the network what it's saying is when you right click on the scanner you need a complexity or just think signal strength level of 600. Every time you place down a transmitter you get a certain number of signal strength based on the Y level and the type of transmitter. So let's start with the basic uh, beginning transmitter which is the GPS transmitter. If I come back over here to our control panel, so again, I'm on the transmitter overview screen. You'll see I have a GPS transmitter. We've placed it down at Y equals 71. So the basic transmitter gives you a signal strength of 71. Well, we need 600 to get a full network running. So in this case, we've got to place nine of them at Y equals 71. If we were up at Y equals 250, I would need three. If we were down at y equals 1, I'd need 600 of them. So the higher you are, the better. So now if I come over to my control panel, you'll see I have 9. It tells you where they're at, and every one of them has a signal strength of 71 because the basic one takes your y level at, or your y level, excuse me, and that becomes a signal strength. Now, as you progress up the transmitters, you get a bonus, and that bonus is based on the number of transmitters that are in there. For example, the next one excuse me, is the advanced. Well, the advanced is made, what the heck? There we go. The advanced is made of four of the basic transmitters. So you're going to get a bonus. So let's look at what this has now done. We are at a signal strength of 384 at Y equals 71. So what does that translate? How do you determine this number? Well, if you take 384 divided by 71, it's like 5.5628 or something. There's no magical number that got it there. What it is, because there's four transmitters in a GPS transmitter, every Y level gives you four times that Y level. So if I'm at Y level 71, I get 284 signal strength from being at Y71 plus I get a bonus of 100. If you want to test that theory, you think I'm right or wrong, you want to prove it either way, go to Y equals level 1, place it down on 1, the signal strength should be 104, and 2 it's 108 and so on. So you get four times the Y level plus 100 on a GPS. So at Y equals 71, I only need two of those to actually have a sufficient network strength. So I look at two, I have a complexity level of 768, I can geomine. But you know what, let's go a little bit further. Let's say we're playing really low in the world. I'm gonna want a Carbonado one then. Because the Carbonado one, I've got one of these down at Y equals 71. If I look at my signal strength, I needed 600, I'm at 1636. So how does that happen? Well, first of all, a GPS transmitter that's a carbon auto base has 16 GPS transmitters. Therefore, every Y level you're at, you get the Y times 16, or in this case, 71 times 16 is 1136. You get a 500 signal strength bonus simply from using the carbon auto one. So to get it to work at that level, if I place it at Y equals 7, I'm at a 612 signal. I'm good to go. And then if you think, well, let's take one other level. I don't have one. I didn't uh, craft one. But I've got the energized transmitter. It's 64 GPS transmitters. So for every Y level you're at, you get Y times 64 plus a 600 point bonus. So if I'm at Y equals 71, my, bonus, my, my level is going to be like 4,800. Man, that's enough to mine from anywhere in the world. All I got to do is take a portable geo scanner with me, and I'm pretty sure I can mine from a, a few chunks away. Actually, I know you can. I just forget how many chunks away it is. 
but with a portable scanner, you can set up the network and you have the ability to mine from certain distances. So the stronger that signal is, the better. So if I were to take, let's say, and I haven't tried this yet, so this is a guess, but if I took 10 energized transmitters and put them at Y equals 250, you know, I might have a signal strength of, oh, I don't know, 50,000. I wonder just how far I could geoscan from there. So in a nutshell, hopefully, that explains geomining. So again, you've got to get that complexity level to 600. Basic level gives you the same Y level you're at for each one. This gives you the Y level times 4 plus 100. The carbon auto gives you the Y level times 16 plus 500. And then the carbon, or the, excuse me, the energized one would give you the Y level times 64 plus 600. So if there's somebody who's set up a network of like 60,000 and want to see, grab yourself a portable geo scanner and see just how far away you can mine from. I'd love to know, see if anybody can do it, say, well, the chunks I would assume would have to be loaded, but I think you'd be able to do it from at least eight chunks away. Give it a shot. Let me know. Maybe I'll set up a single player world and test that. All right. So now let's talk about the oil pump. Oil pump also has to be powered. All you need to do is put buckets in. Uh, where's my scanner? Whoops. Here we go. No, I took my complexity down. Hang on. Let me put it back up. There we go. So the, the scanner, or excuse me, not the scanner, the oil pump will simply pull this out. So if you give it a bunch of empty buckets, it will pull the buckets out in oil. The nice thing about oil buckets is they stack to 64, whereas a rugger bucket is 16. So if you're in an ocean biome and you get 70 ore oil buckets, you know, you can put 32 into the oil pump You'll just have to come back and put the next 32 in and so on until you get them all. But they will stack up to 64, which makes transporting them a little bit easier. So my goal right now is I actually need to, this is the whole reason we set this up, is I need Cinebrite. Cinebrite is this one right here. It's a new item added for global warming. I need it to smelt it so that I can get mercury to create a thermometer in global warming because you might have seen, I've already gotten a warning, my temperature has risen uh, 0.05 degrees Celsius, or roughly a tenth of a degree Fahrenheit. Now, not that that's substantial, but I've learned about global warming. When we hit certain temperatures, bad things happen. Okay, so what I'm going to do is kind of, I've got this on my other computer going right now. So a few things that contribute to this. First of all, forest fires can start. Uh, once the temperature hits 40 C or 104 Fahrenheit, you have the possibility of forest fires. Uh, and, and the game's going to display everything in Celsius, I believe. Uh, yes, it's going to display it all in Celsius. I'm just looking at the config file right now. Ice will start melting at 2 degrees Celsius, which is the equivalent of about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, I know. No big deal. You can get a slowness. You can get a uh, burn player can actually burn and a lot of things contribute to pollution so for example machine recipe input items the first five things I saw in this I said oh crap charcoal coal carbon compressed carbon carbon chunk then it goes synthetic diamond raw carbon auto carbon auto buckets of oil oh my gosh the things that we are mining like crazy are raising temperature so we need to put things in place and this is why I started looking up global warming we need to find out how to reduce emissions, right? We, we can't be bad keepers of our world. We've got to take care of things. The worst is the blistering ingot. 0 0.03 degrees, it might potentially raise the temperature. So something, animal breeding and killing can even rise it, raise the temperature. So what we need to do, there's absorbent machines, which uh, is an air compressor, which I believe, once we put a filter in it, will actually start to pull carbon emissions out of the air. Also, planting trees is a good thing. So we'll have to worry about that. So that's part of what we're going to be working on. Next episode is global warming. For this episode, though, we are going to uh, wrap up here. I am going to start doing some geomining. I want to get some more of these things put together and available for our next episode. 
So hopefully you've learned something today. And as always, like I love to say, you've got to play Minecraft. you got to go Boomer, or you got to go home. We'll see you later.